joy to welcome you to worship this morning, uh, those that are worshiping with us virtually and those that have gathered uh, here in the sanctuary at Salem Road. Welcome, welcome, and welcome. I uh, want to lift up just a couple of thoughts as we gather uh, together this morning, um, as always, um, to lift up and share uh, in joy. And so, to name just a few uh, birthdays this week, David Howlett has a birthday, Aaron Jones has a birthday, AJ and Kate Harper have birthdays. Man, what a birthday house. Holly Ann just had a birthday on Friday. Um, and Wayne, we may need to take up an offering for the Harpers birthday fund. And, and Wayne Markinson, uh, a birthday uh, on May the 13th. So happy, happy, happy uh, to all of our birthday lads uh, and ladies. I want to um, invite you, if you're worshiping with us virtually, just to check in, to, to say hello, to, to raise a hand or lift a shout to let us know that, that you're a part uh, of worship as we worship with you. Um, throughout the service, if you uh, have a comment or a question, just share it in the stream. If, if you have a, a confidential need, just direct messages and we'll see to follow up with you. If you have a, a concern to share uh, or, or a need for a visit uh, or a call. If you're here with us in person this morning, we want to invite you please to, to reach for your registration pad and to make a mark uh, of your presence uh, to let us know that you're here. Um, and as well, if you uh, have a need or a desire, desire for a call, if you just mark it on the card as you uh, pass the pad from one side of the pew to the other, uh, the ushers will see that, that we receive um, your need and that we follow up with you this week. Uh, a reminder to us all as well that later in the service as we share in our tithes and offerings, that it's also an opportunity for us to share prayers. And so to invite you again uh, at that time when we prepare um, to, to share prayers uh, online with us, either, either in the comments section or through direct message. And if you're here this morning, uh, to invite you to grab the, the Connect card um, from your bulletin uh, and just to tear it off, uh, there's a place on the back of the card uh, where you may share a joy or a concern. There's a place on the card uh, where you may mark for your prayer uh, to be shared on our prayer wall and in our bulletin in the coming week. Again, or if the need is confidential um, for you to make uh, the the same mark. Uh, just to lift up uh, one more thought this week on Wednesday night, um, we'll be having supper as always um, at six o'clock. And this week we're having a Bible trivia night uh, with, with major prizes. You don't want to miss out. Uh, so you want to hurry up and try to cram all 66 books of the Bible if you can. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, by Wednesday night, um, we will have a great time. Uh, try to remember to bring your phone if you've got one of those fancy smartphones. Um, the, the TV screens in the fellowship hall will sort of be like a Jeopardy board. Uh, there will be questions on there and you'll interact with your phone. It's pretty easy. It only takes a few minutes. I know some of us were here last week. Raise your hand if you were. Um, and it's pretty easy to, to use the little app. Um, we'll do all that and get set up for trivia night uh, on Wednesday night, so you hope, we hope you'll be with us. There's just a couple of Wednesday nights left this semester, uh, this week, and then the, the following, uh, we'll be having a pizza party uh, on the 17th of May. So come and share uh, in spring and in the joy of fellowship with each other, uh, good food uh, and good fun. But I'll ask if you will now just to stand on your feet, that we stand together in faith, um, and that we share uh, in the Apostles' Creed. <coughs> I believe in God, the Father Almighty, the Maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day He rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And let us pray. God, come into this house to your house. 
The same that you came to the house of Mary and Martha, the same to the house of Zacchaeus, and Lord, uh, to all of our homes. But come into this, your house, Lord, this, your house of prayer and praise. Come in, Lord, and fill us by your Spirit. Lord, come in and set your communion table before us, the table of forgiveness, of grace, of mercy, and love. Lord, hear the praises that we lift. Hear the prayers that we share. Lord, for your glory we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. The song, and we'll start with That's Why We Praise Him. <coughs> One, two, three, four. He came to live, live a perfect life. He came to be the living word of light. He came to die, so we'd be reconciled. He came to rise, to show His power and light. That's why we praise Him.
We want to invite the, the children to come forward for our time with young disciples. And, and Brother Don will be sharing a message with you. So uh, kiddos, come on down. Good morning. Would you do anything? If I ask you to do something, would you do it? You would? If I ask, if I ask you to pat your head and read your tummy, you could do that? You could do that? Pat your head and rub your tummy, can you? Oh, good. So if anyone asks you, if I ask you to do anything, you would do anything I ask you to do, right? No? Do you do, if your parents ask you something, that ask you to do something, you do, do you do it? Huh? It's not Simon says. You can stop. <laughs> but if if your parents ask you to do ask you to do something, would you do it? Yes. Most every time. Most every time. Hmm. Not most of the time. Not most of the time. But most. Uh, hmm. So. You don't follow directions. Hmm. So if there's... Uh, do what? This is like being on a lasso. Being on a... Being on a what? Laugh show. Laugh show? Like TV? Oh, TV show. Like a game show? No. Okay. If the Bible... If there's something in the Bible... If someone in the Bible tell you to do something, would you do it? And he, and the person, in the, there's a person in the Bible that said he'd do anything he wanted, he'd do anything you wanted him to do for you. Would you do it? So, if you saw someone hurt, would you hurt, help them? Yes. If you saw someone sick, would you help them? Yes. Um, if you saw somebody need some food, would you help them? Yes. Hmm. If you saw someone homeless, you would help them? And build a house, and the house, that house could, would be green. So they could live in and buy all the stuff for the house. Yeah, in the in the ver in the Bible verse it says Jesus will do anything you, he'll do anything you want him to do for you. So this month, what is something we're supposed to do this month to help other folks? Do you remember? I have no idea. You don't have no idea? Oh no. Oh. What? Um, stop the hunger. That's part of what did Brother Justin ask everyone to do last week? I have no idea. Ah, you were, were you here? I was here. You were here. Were you, what did he ask you to do? I ask don't you, remember. When you walked in the, 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 in the back of the church, what did you see? Did you see a cart? Yeah. What was on the cart? Um, uh, food. Food. What did he ask you to do? Bring food for the pantry, for our pantry out front, our blessing box. So that's just like Jesus asked you to do something. Jesus asked us to take care of folks, right? So us, by bringing food, we can put it in the box and people can come get it to help them out, right? And that's, they put it in the blessing box. Yes. So we got, that's something we got to remember to do. Jesus, he said he'll do what, he'll do, he'll do whatever he wants He'll do for us, but we have to do for him, right? Right? <laughs> Bo. Sorry. David, right? You, my, I, I see everything you do. I see out of the corner of my eyes. <laughs> so, so, the rest of this month, everyone, tell you what, I have a challenge for you. The rest of this month, everyone bring one can of something. I don't care if it's Raviolios, um, uh, spaghettios, chili, or chili, whatever. Everyone bring one can. My soup. No, everyone bring one can. Those soups are good. Oh, uh, soup, whatever. Everyone, everyone, all the kids bring one. How, how about if we challenge everybody out in the out there? Everybody in the congregation bring one can of something. It doesn't matter what it is. Okay. 
And that way we'll fill up, the, fill up our pantry before we can put it in the blessing box, okay? Will you promise to do that? Yes. Okay, bow your head. Father God, be with each one of these boys and girls and their families. Let them know that when we do something for us, when you do something for us, we do something for you. Let them remember that when we take care of your, uh, your people, you're, we're taking care of you. Uh, be with them this week at school. We ask all this in your son's name, Jesus Christ, amen. I confess, Brother Don, for a minute, I was trying to remember what I said last week. <laughs> That's the truth. Thank you for the reminder. Our scripture uh, reading this morning comes from the Gospel uh, of John uh, in the 14th chapter. Uh, we read from John uh, 14, beginning at the first verse and, and reading through uh, the 14th. I'll give you a minute as you may want to thumb your way there in your Bible or a pew Bible on a screen or a page. Um, as you do, I'll, I would uh, offer us just this context that, that we are uh, reading from John in the 14th chapter. We find that Jesus is in the upper room uh, in John chapters 13, 14, 15, 16, and, and 17. The Bible tells us of the foot washing of the disciples uh, of the promises of the Holy Spirit, of Jesus' word, of, of the, the vine and the branches and the power of the Holy Spirit and, and his preparing uh, to leave them. His preparing uh, to leave them. Uh, and so uh, let us hear now the word uh, of God uh, from the Gospel of St. John. Don't let your hearts be troubled, but trust in God and trust in me. There is more than enough room in my father's home. And if this were not so, would I have told you that I am going to prepare a place for you? When everything is ready, I will come and get you so that you will always be with me where I am. And you know the way to where I am going. No, we don't know, Lord, Thomas said. We have no idea where you're going. So how could we know the way? But Jesus told him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And no one comes to the Father except through me. If you had really known me, you would know who my Father is. And from now on, you do know him, and you have seen me. And then Philip said, Lord... Show us the Father and we will be satisfied. And Jesus replied, Have I been with you all this time, Philip? And yet you still don't know who I am? Anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. So why are you asking me to show him to you? Don't you believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words I speak are not my own. But my Father who lives in me does his work through me. Just believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. Or at least believe because of the work you have seen me do. I tell you the truth. Anyone who believes in me will do the same works I have done and even greater works. Because I am going to be with the Father you can ask for anything in my name and I will do it so that the Son can bring glory to the Father. Yes, ask me for anything in my name and I will do it. The Word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Last summer we uh, took a, a family uh, road trip as we uh, do and one of the places that we went to uh, see uh, was Mesa Verde. Um, some of you have probably been there. Anybody been to, to, to Mesa Verde out in, in Colorado? And 
uh, and seen uh, there as you uh, scale your way down the side uh, of, of one of the great plateaus and mountains, um, you find there the, the cliff dwellers, uh, at least uh, a portion uh, of what is left uh, cut and, and carved there uh, into the, the side of the rock where, where they're known to have uh, made their dwelling place. Um, they they uh, farmed uh, up on the great plateaus uh, and in the green places. Um, and, and a substantial community lived there uh, in the side uh, of the cliff. Uh, they, they made fires there and, and, and weaved baskets. Uh, they raised uh, their children uh, and families in this place. It's interesting uh, to me that the, the history of this place, and, and all places have history, don't they? All, all places uh, have uh, some history. The place where, where we are gathered here this morning and, and the place where you are, wherever that is that, that you may be watching this morning. Some of you may be sitting outside the, the camper by the lake. All places uh, have history. Tell your neighbor that, will you? All places have history. E everywhere uh, has history. And history, you see, though, is not just the place, uh, but it's the people. Amen? Amen? All places have history and, and all people have history. And in every place and in every one, uh, there is a story to be told. There is a life that has been lived. Amen? And amen? Tell, tell somebody all people have stories. Tell them, I dare you. You know, all, all people have stories, right? All people have stories. All people ha have history. Not just some people that we read about in the books like I did when I was a kid. You know, when we read about different uh, people groups in, in Arkansas, different groups of, of native persons. And, and many of us, let's raise a hand. Have you traveled around and seen like the, the, the Toltec mounds? Or have you been around? I know some of us, come on now, have scampered around at Lake Washita. There, there are all kinds of, of interesting places and, and people that have lived uh, just here in the hills and by the rivers and streams in the delta and the mountains. I mean, so many different cultures, if you will, uh, and landscapes in, in the natural state. Amen? Uh, a, a beautiful place to live and to grow up and to adventure uh, and to learn about life. And, and I'm going to work this one in in the teachings of Jesus. Amen? One of the places that we traveled to this summer, uh, no, I'm sorry, this spring, uh, and it was almost by accident, was that we, uh, that we stopped by Graceland. Um, someone uh, in our family, I think, had been there in utero, but had never been there before uh, to, to see it. Uh, and to experience it, and for some reason, probably because that cute boy was in that movie about Elvis, uh, somebody in our house wanted to go to see Graceland. Um, and, and so we went to that place, and we looked at all the stuff. Um, Elvis had a lot of stuff, didn't he? Uh, I mean, I don't know that they've got it all, and they probably took some down to the you know, pawn shop or something in it when he was in a tight, but, but he had a lot of stuff, uh, you know, a lot of it. I'm not sure that all that stuff ever really made Elvis happy, though, as much as his family or his relationship with the Lord. Amen? I'm not sure that, that all, and he probably could have, if he couldn't have bought all the tea in China, he could have bought most of it at one time or another. One of the places that you can visit, though, is in Tupelo, Mississippi. And that's the place where Elvis was born. Right there. That's it. You see it? There's not a six-car garage and 14 motorcycles and 12 bass boats and a bowling alley. But there's four walls. There's a simple flat roof, and there was love in that house. There was love in that house. All places have history, you see, and all people have history. All places have history, and all people have history, and places have a story to tell, and people have a story to tell about their life and their living and the love that they have experienced. Another place that you can see, uh, for you baseball fans out there, um, is, is in Mobile, Alabama. 
There's a, a rusty old tin shed there, and you can see a little uh, simple house. It's a lot like the one Elvis grew up in, and maybe many of us too. Just a simple little row house. That's where Hammer and Hank was born and raised. He hit more home runs than Babe Ruth. Did you know it? His motto was, anybody here know it? I'd give you a quarter if I had one. Do you know what Hammer and Hank's motto is? It's two words. Keep swinging. Keep swinging. We find Jesus here in the upper room, you see, in a borrowed house. Jesus who lived his life as a, as a man with no home of his own but on the road, sort of out of feed sacks, if you will, and from the grain that was to be gleaned from the sides of fields and for the love and care of his neighbors, he spent some of his life homeless. He visited the home of Mary and Martha, of Zacchaeus, of Simon, and others too. He came bringing love and peace and healing uh, in all of these places and to all of these people. And when his time on the earth was nearing its end, we find him in the 14th chapter of John saying these words, the first of the, of the chapter, do not let your hearts be troubled. He goes on to say that I am preparing a place, watch this church, for you. And when everything is ready, I will come and get you. You see that? A place for you. I want you to touch somebody on the shoulder and tell them you're special. I mean it. I want you to touch somebody on the shoulder this morning and tell them you are special. You know, you might have to stretch over in a minute when we pass the peace. If there's not anybody close enough, you might have to get up and inch over there. I want you to tell somebody this morning you're special. If you're worshiping with us virtually, I want you to shout out somebody else. You know, you, you may not be here. Uh, your, your wife may be at work, you know, or your husband may be over here, or your granny. You, you may have to let somebody know. You can just let them know. You don't have to tell them that I told you. You're special. You're so special, in fact, that God is preparing a place, custom-made home, you see, just for you. Amen? Just for you. There's a country song that the guy sings about the outskirts of heaven. He isn't wanting to be downtown, you see, on the streets of gold. He wants to be out somewhere with a few acres to mow and a, and a porch swing. Amen? That may be where your place is. Are you with me? Now, some of y'all may want to go electric. You know, you're going to walk everywhere and ride a hybrid bike, and you're going to be downtown and uptown, and you want to have to ride an elevator to, you know, to get to your place. Amen? And that's all right, too. It takes uh, both kinds of folks, doesn't it? I've seen Green Acres, city folks, country folks. It takes both kinds. But there is a special place for you, beloved. Maybe you have... Uh, experience some trouble. And note, Jesus says, do not let your hearts be troubled. And the reason why He said it is because there was trouble. There was trouble, trouble, trouble. In the last of His Word to them, when you turn in the red letter pages of your Bible through John 14, if you were to finish this chapter in 15 and 16, you'll find that the last words of the 16th chapter of John are this at verse 33. I have told you this, that you will have peace in Me. For here on earth, watch this church, you will have many trials, many sorrows, depending on your translation, many troubles. You know what the last part is that he says? But take heart, because I have overcome the world. All places have histories, friends. And all of our histories have some troubles. Troubles, troubles, troubles. All people have histories, and all people have some, some troubles. The hope is knowing that God loves us, that you are special, that that's not just some preacher being silly on this Sunday morning, that you are special, that you are uniquely and wonderfully made. If you haven't looked outside in a moment and, and noticed the trees, noticed the oak tree or the maple, the tulip tree, whatever may be close outside your window, your yard, your porch, your house, your home, but notice that, that every one of them is unique. Have you ever noticed that about a tree? That God didn't just sort of lay each one of them on the copier machine, you know, and start sticking them in the ground. 
Have you ever noticed that every tree is special to God? That every blade of grass is special to God? He, he told us in his word, in fact, that Solomon, in all of his wisdom, was not like the grasses. He said, consider the lilies. Look at these flowers, y'all, he told them. And, and look at the birds of the air. Notice all of these things. And not a one falls that your father doesn't notice. And he feeds them. The birds with no barn, and, and he feeds them. And do not let your hearts, he said, be troubled. Do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow has trouble of its own. We deal with today for today, amen? And we let God be God. I don't know about you, beloved, but, but there have been some moments when my mind has been worried and my heart has been troubled, troubled, troubled. I heard about the the death yesterday morning early of a 25-year-old boy in our community. And late in the day of a shooting in, in Texas where a childhood friend of mine and his wife happened to be at a mall. And my heart was troubled, troubled, troubled. There is a place, though, where we can go. A place and, a, and there is a person that we can see about these troubles. That our problems and our worries will be taken and taken care of by and for and through the power of the Holy Spirit in the person of Jesus Christ. Amen? When I think about some of these places that I have visited, and including this one, Sometimes I, I sit in this sanctuary when it seems to be empty, but for the spirit of those who have gone before us to receive the reward. I think about some of the things they've said, at least some of the ones that I knew that would say, that was a good one, choir. I think about the, the things that they said, the things that they carried and they did. I look at the old pictures at times uh, of my childhood and I think about the house of my grandparents, much like the ones that, that you might have seen on the screens this morning. Just simple, four walls and a roof, one bathroom. A husband and wife raising four uh, daughters and, and all of them in one bathroom and a house so full of love it spilled out of the windows. My granny who would go out with her apron and pick up the pecans that she gathered uh, from her yard and, and would make pies and take them to the neighbors. And if she had heard someone had had trouble, you see. She would just sort of show up at their house and, and offer them a pie and give out of what little she had for what she could. The newspapers that she would spread on a small uh, tin-topped table in a one-room uh, kitchen and dining area, in the way that, that she would can uh, peaches in the, in the summertime, and figs, and, and make jellies, and jams. And at Christmas time, she would write a little note on a piece of paper, and, and the other gifts that she would make, like fudge brownies that she would wrap in newspapers. And you knew which ones were for the kids, because she wrapped them with the comic book section. Preach, y'all preach and whenever something happened at granny's house whenever somebody had a uh oh Bo probably wouldn't know about a uh oh but I've had a couple uh oh's in my time say whoops I you know something jumped off the table or maybe my cousin and I got into it in the backyard and the slugging and kicking went down and somebody went to tell on us to granny you know Maybe something got broke when we were wrestling and roughhousing in that small one-room, uh, uh, two-bedroom house. And she'd say, it's no trouble at all when we cleaned up the mess. Are you okay? I think about Jesus who saw Martha and her need for attention, banging the pots and pans, having to be noticed. I think about Jesus when, when Thomas asked the questions that's on all of our mind at times and, and said, oh, he's so outspoken. And I noticed that as far as Jesus goes, it was no trouble at all, was it really? It was no trouble at all, morning, noon, or night. It's no trouble for him here and now and any time either. You see, his door is like the, the back door of my granny's house. 
It's always open. I'm not sure other than in the dead of winter that I ever hardly saw it closed. That door would just be swung open and it wouldn't even open all the way because it was so small the little refrigerator and the cabinets touched and the door wouldn't really even open all the way. I have no idea how they ever got a refrigerator in her house when she got one. They probably had to disassemble it in the lawn. But there was that screen door. We'd go by Granny's house and, and for a lot of years she didn't drive and and I'd run around, the, you know, my mom would pull up and drop me off, say, well, Granny's going to watch you, and I'd run around the back of the house and swing open that door, and I'd hear the sound of that unmistakable spring, and then the bang when that door would crash closed and start hollering, Granny! Sometimes she might be down the street for a minute, but the door was always open. And that's the last thing you see that Jesus said to them in this simple passage that we've read this morning. The first thing he told them was don't let your hearts be troubled. He didn't say there wasn't trouble. Trouble, trouble. The world will have trouble, but I have overcome it. He said do not let your hearts be troubled. And then he told them there, and, and Brother Don reminded us, he said, ask me for anything. So just ask, church. Because you'll find that when you ask uh, the Lord with your heart, from your soul. That's no trouble at all. May we bow our heads? Father God, thank you for sending uh, your Son who loved us all even more than, than our sin. who loved us then and who loves us now and, and forever and who's already, already, Lord, making a place for each one of us. Lord, give us the, the hope, uh, Lord Jesus, of, of knowing that there is a place for each one of us so we should worry not. Give us the peace even in the here and in the now and in the times of trouble in this world uh, of coming to you, Lord, of opening the door of our hearts to your heart, of speaking to you of our struggles and of receiving your peace and your blessing. Lord, we pray for those as well this day, for those who yet uh, do not know you, or they haven't accepted you or invited you into their home or their heart. We pray, Lord, that their trouble would bring them to their end. To the end of themselves and, and to the beginning of a life and eternity in a relationship with you, Lord. That they would know, Lord, the peace that passes understanding. And so we pray for them all. The sick, the lonely, the lost knowing, God, that, that you are here and there and everywhere and that every sinner will find who comes to you to the very heart of God that it's no trouble at all. So bless us, Lord, as we prepare to share and then to receive from the gift of heaven and from your glory. We pray. Amen. I want to uh, invite the ushers uh, to, to come uh, as we prepare to share. I want to give thanks in advance for, for all that you uh, have given and will give. I want to say again thank you to those uh, who showed up like angels, Sheila Long uh, and Becky Griffith and Dennis, uh, who, who have uh, showed up and filled up the pantries. Um, I, I want to thank Denise who even gave me the idea as I kept looking at empty shelves and then all of a sudden there was a knock at the door just after uh, uh, the, the noon hour and, and, and some groceries had come unexpectedly uh, to, to me. Uh, and I had just been thinking, Lord, what, where are we going to do? Uh, and it was Denise who said, just ask. And I thought, you have not because you asked not. Amen. I, I want to thank all of you. I saw the baskets overflowing. I want to thank you, Randall Wilchman. Uh, he said, some people brought this food in and I'm taking it out uh, as he was filling the box uh, before service. Uh, thank you, church. Thank you that you believe even in a, in a crazy time, in a messed up economy, that there's more than enough from what we have to give to those who need. Amen? Um, and I thank you for the prayers that you share and lift, um, for those that you will place uh, in the basket and those that you'll share online. Uh, I pray as well for those of you that may guard things uh, quietly in your heart. 
uh, I pray with you and, and for you. Um, but ushers, would you come that we may pray? Thank you. And let us pray. God, we thank you so much for the gifts you have given, for the blessings we have received, for your presence and your peace and your hope, even in our times of trouble. We know, Lord, that, that with the right heart and the right mindset, that it's no trouble at all. So bless the blessings and, and bless the givers, God, all for your glory, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen.
Be seated. We got just a little up, down, front, back, left, right, forward, and then we'll be out the door, right? You'll be all exercised and rested and ready. Uh, hopefully we can still beat the Baptist, right? If we hurry. I want to invite you if you uh, are gathered here, or maybe if you've even at home and you snuck a hymnal out, um, to, to join with me um, as we uh, prepare to share uh, in the gift of the Lord's table. If you've got a hymnal there, just flop it open. It's right at the beginning that we share um, in the greeting. Uh, it says a service of word and table uh, as we gather in God's word and, and before his table uh, to remember and, and to receive. And so, hear now the greeting, the grace of the Lord Christ Jesus be with you. The risen Christ is with us. And let us take uh, just a moment now, just a moment, uh, to, to pray uh, together. Uh, we'll invite just a moment of silence, uh, and then we will pray uh, the prayer there uh, together. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known. Now we've got to start over because y'all ain't praying with me now. If you got your book out, you'll see them words is in bold. We're on page number six. I'm my bad. Thank you, Miss Penny. What an excellent communion steward. I'm sorry, y'all. Page six. Uh, the opening prayer there on the left-hand side. Do you got it? About middle of the way down, say amen. Let us pray this prayer together. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Now, I want to invite you uh, next to pray with me uh, the confession and the pardon. And so turn over to page 8. Just skip right over to page number 8 where it says confession at the pardon at the top. For we have prayed uh, knowing that our hearts are open, amen, that our desires are known and that, and that we will be cleansed. Amen and amen. And so let us pray this simple prayer of confession together, and then we'll have a silent moment to, to pray whatever may still be in our hearts. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. And we have not loved our neighbors. And we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And friends, hear the good news that Christ has died while we were yet sinners. And that shows God's love toward us. For in the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God and amen. Now real quick, you've got to pass the peace to a couple people. Don't be long if we're trying to get out on time, but quick like now. Pass the peace to a couple people. Let them know, right? Remember, you're sitting by somebody that's special. You told them earlier that you're special. You're special. Peace be with you. And peace be with you. And also with you, sir. Remember, you told them earlier that they were special. And I'm saying peace. You're special. And you're special, Corey Carson. And you're special. And also with you and with you. That's right. That's right. And every time we gather at this table even, we know that there's a special place for every one of us. Amen? And that someday, we all going to be there. Let us uh, remember now uh, Jesus the Christ, who gathered uh, together with those who loved Him, who proclaimed the, the very mystery uh, of heaven to them, and who told them that 
that in this life they would have trouble, that, that, but that He ha had overcome the world. He told them that He would go and prepare a place for each one of them, for each one of us, and that He would come and take us there when everything was ready, that wherever He is, we will be also. The Bible tells us that, that on the night uh, when Jesus prepared to give Himself uh, for our sins, for their sins and for the sins uh, of the whole world, that He took uh, a loaf of bread from the table, that He offered the blessing and said, Thanks be to you, O God, the Creator of heaven and earth, for you have made rain to the earth and grain for the table, and you alone have given fruit to the vine. And so as He prepared, then He shared the bread and said, Take and eat, this is My body, and it is given for you. As they share in the simple supper and in the bread of heaven together and in the hope of Jesus, the, the Bible tells us that He also took a cup, that He lifted it from the heaven and said, Drink from this cup, all of you. This is the blood of the new covenant. It's poured out for you and for many more for the forgiveness of sins. And so do this as often as you will in remembrance of me. And so it is that we gather in Christ's holy name as His holy church. And together we offer ourselves in praise and in thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us. And if you're looking, we're on page 10 in the middle. And together then, we proclaim this truth to the world, this mystery of faith, that Christ has died, that Christ is risen, and that He will come again. And so we pray, pour out Your Holy Spirit on us gathered here. On these simple gifts of the bread and the juice, that they would be for us the body and blood of Christ, and that we would be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by His blood. By Your Spirit, Lord, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world. Until Christ does come in final victory, and we feast at His heavenly banquet. We pray this through Your Son, Jesus Christ, and with Your Holy Spirit in Your holy church. All honor and glory is Yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. So as the children of God, brothers and sisters, may we pray uh, the prayer of Jesus. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. I want to invite Brother Russell uh, to come uh, and, and to assist me. We first are going to, uh, to serve the chancel. Uh, invite the, the choir and the, and the praise band to, to come and to receive. Um, and then uh, after Russell and I have uh, served them... Uh, we'll invite all of you to come. We'll have two lines uh, for service uh, this morning, uh, both at the center aisle uh, here at the head of the church. Um, on one side, Miss Penny and Suzanne will be serving, um, and on the other side, uh, Mr. Alex uh, and Mr. Ryan will be serving. Uh, and, and then uh, to invite you, if you want to spend a moment at the chancel to pray or kneel um, and to return to your seats by the side aisles. If there's anyone here that struggles transitioning, uh, with up or down, um, if you'll just wait for all of those uh, that have come forward to be served, uh, the stewards will come and serve you in your seat um, that all of us may receive from the first to the last and, and the last to the first. Amen. Um, if there's anyone that, that uh, has a need of a gluten allergy, um, rather than to receive uh, of the one loaf and of the bread, um, we have the self-serve um, uh, communion sets with the wafer. Uh, so if you have need of that, whether you're uh, in line or uh, sitting and waiting, uh, just let us know and we'll be glad to, to grab and to serve you um, of a single serve um, that all may receive. 
Uh, I want to ask uh, Alex and Ryan, if you will as well, though, when the chancel comes, uh, to, to come and receive with them uh, as, as servants to the body. Um, and so, uh, choir, would you please, and, and praise team, would you please? Okay. Uh, who would wish to receive. Uh, so please come and receive. You don't have to be a member of uh, this church or any. Uh, any who love the Lord and wish to receive are welcome at His table.
you look there uh, near the bottom of page 11, you find the prayer from receiving. Uh, the prayer from receiving. And I'll give you a moment to find it, that we would pray together uh, this simple prayer. As we share in the glory of this feast, um, as we share in the love of God and the history that we live together, we share in this prayer. Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your Spirit to give ourselves for others. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us stand, right? Sun's out, guns out. Let us stand and sing our closing song. One, two, three, four. church we're you're the church and we're the church amen amen and amen you go about the world today and this week you spread a little love you may be the only bible that they read the only jesus that they get you may be going the extra mile and somebody says oh you don't need to worry about me and that's when you tell them it's no trouble it's no trouble so hear this blessing Go forth in peace, the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all now and forever. Amen, amen, and amen.